And so this is the outline of my presentation. It's quite simple. My presentation may be quite different from all of you, not about the gaming or programming, but more about the server or the system implementation on the side. And so before I go to my presentation, I would like to I would like all of us to have an image or the same definition of what is a survey. First, uh, we need we define a survey as often used to has been often used to assess other people's thoughts, opinions, and feelings. Simply, it is one of of many methods to gather information. And on this slide, we gen is generally divided the technical method of survey is divided into two. First is the conventional or paper-based method, and the second is the modern online-based method. The the advantage of the modern online-based method is that you can assess the survey anywhere at any time and using a browser and connected to the internet and you can submit your responses online. And this is the motivation of this project where the most of the people own computer devices, meaning that the online based method is preferred because of this automation. But the problem is that the internet connection are still unreliable in usually most developing countries. For example, this is one of my peers' uh, recent publication that uh, in, uh, in Myanmar that her university doesn't have a good network, but most of the people own a computer and laptop ownership. And so Back then, we cannot use the paper, we cannot use the online based survey, but we have to refer based to the hard or conventional paper based survey. So, the question is how to utilize this situation. And so, uh, our first, we start our project, our first implementation is to propose a portable server or a hand carry server. So, the concept is if, we, the, if the people cannot connect to the internet or connect to our server, why not bring our server to them? The, this is possible due to the invention of the mini computer Raspberry Pi, and we just need to transform it into a hotspot devices. So our first project is an initial implementation where we did, uh, where we did, uh, we find the limitation of this uh, NK server. We, do a simulation and uh, we do the server the survey labor and the advantage of this method is that it decreases the manual labor and an instant or, or instantaneous statistics and instant result. So that was the first implementation on this work. Uh, it is, if you see in the previous slide, the first implementation is pro the proposed model is only for one hand carry server. And we identified the limitations of back then, it can only handle 100 concurrent users. So the question is what happens if there are more than 100 users? And what if it's implemented by the organization? So we propose to extend our implementation by deploying more hand carry servers and usually involves a main server and the responses are accumulated incrementally, usually. And this, and this is the, the extended implementation where we propose to have a more hand carry server. And so this, uh, for example, on this illustration there is four, we can handle up to 400 concurrent users or 400 participants. And to remind you again that back that we initiated this project because on the site or in some field or in some places there is no internet connection. So in order for the Raspberry Pi or the Henry server to synchronize to the main server, the surveyor have to walk from from uh, from their site to the hand carry to to the to the location with an internet. And usually, a uh, response is increment is uh, uploaded incrementally uh, by day. And um, 
And uh, okay, let's go to the next slide. And by the way, this uh, this this uh, this research is more to uh, more to mobile to the survey side than to mobile on the than mobile learning on the student side. Here we did a survey simulation. We borrow one of our peers which we will present here, which is a MOOC readiness survey consists of 30 questionnaire items. And the responses are anonymous as set on these settings. The cookies are used for duplication control. And up to 300 fake responses are generated. And this is an example of the online survey that is conducted. And when uh, synchronizing the responses, there, there is a, one of the choices, the full synchronization. A full synchronization is you, where you upload all the responses uh, fully, day by day. This is uh, the most reliable method because all the data are kept. However, it, as you can see, it may be very heavy on transmission costs. But there is another choice called an incremental synchronization where you don't upload the res when you don't uh, synchronize the responses uh, fully but only the difference between day one and day two on and as you upload the difference each day only the increments are uh, synchronized or are sent and just looking at this illustration you can know that this is this can reduce the transmission cost and it can save this space. So that is the outline of the presentation. So what are the formats of the responses? The format of the responses is in, in a .csv exported format extracted from the database and directories. These dumb .csvs are synchronized and imported to the database. So this is the model where we call it the dumb and upload the synchronization process where we first both of the Hankery server and the main server uh, dump their the responses into a .csv format or a file or an archive as you can see. Then we put both the .csv into a synchronizer that will be synchronized both of the .csv. And finally, after they are synchronized, they will be imported back to the main server. And there are many, maybe there are many, there are many methods how to perform the synchronization. But on this, uh, on this work, we choose to use a differential uh, synchronization algorithm. It is called the rsync algorithm. So uh, on the overhead of how it works is, for it, for instance, on server A, there is an old file. An old file will generate a signature. And the signature will is a the old file is a responses and the signature is a bundle of checksums. It will be sent from server A to server B, where server B will use that signature to on its key file to calculate the delta. And the delta here is the difference between the new file and the old file. And the delta will be sent from server A to server B, so from server B to server A. And this delta can, can be called a patch, can also be called a patch, and this will be used to patch the old file. And after the old file is patched, it will transform or turn into the new file uh, identical to the one on server B. So basically, this are single algorithm is a differential algorithm or a diff which can work on different between different machines or it can work if it can calculate a differential remotely. And this is an even more detail of our thing but it's not the complete detail. But this is the, it should be enough. The signature is a, as I said is a checksum. It contains a two type of a checksum. One is a strong checksum, for example a black two or an MD5, and a weak checksum of a, for example Adler 32, which is a rolling block checksum. So first the the algorithm works by splitting the two of the files into blocks. 
the users or the software can define of how much block they want to divide and to, to see the to find the difference between the new file and the old file is by using checksum if the checksum matches meaning if the checksum matches meaning that the, the blocks are identical if the checksum doesn't match meaning that that file, that block is different. And also the method of check checking is a rolling block where the block will rolls each time and then it will check the block between each block of the old file and it will keep on, it will also roll uh, when finding which block it matches. And so on the right side is uh, what happened if this uh, parsing algorithm is implemented on our uh, on our survey of or the synchronization of responses for example uh, this on the right side we have an old file which have a day one and day two responses and a new file which has a day one day two and a day three responses on this case the day three responses are new so to synchronize or to update the old file into the new file it, it, it first divides the file into blocks and then it will it will check the block will check each block for which one it matches on this case uh, the first block will matches on this one and the second block matches on this one and finally in the end there is a block which uh, doesn't match the block which doesn't match is a uh, we um, the location is recorded or or stored, and then the that data is sent to the old file, and then must be put on that exact location. So the delta is containing the locations of identical blocks and the new blocks. And this is a just a this is a simu the simulation where we synchronize uh, from one hundred to 200 responses, then from 200 to 300 responses. So we, we generate the response uh, incrementally, there is a 100, 200, and 300. On the left side, on, on this uh, figure, this is a full synchronization, and on the right side is an incremental synchronization. The blue, the blue block is from day one, which has a 100 responses. On day two, the we did another survey on, on day two, and we will have another, we'll have a 200 responses, we'll get another 100 response. And on day three, we will, for example, get another 100 response, and we will have a total of 300 responses. This is the, the left, the vertical bar is a expected network traffic in kilobytes. And so, if we use a full synchronization, on the first day, we will get we will send a 31.7 kilobyte. On the second day, we send another 200 responses, which is a 50.4 kilobyte. And on day three, we will send another 300 responses, which is 75.4 kilobytes. But if we use an incremental synchronization, uh, on day two, we don't need to transfer much more but we only need to transfer to transfer the difference between the between the day two and day one which is around 24.9 kilobytes and same goes for day three that we need to transfer the difference between day three and day two which is around 31.2 kilobytes so as you can see on this uh, this uh, result, it is much more uh, lower transmission cost or much more cheap. A lower transmission cost can mean that a lower network traffic is produced and no and less time is uh, consumed during the transmission. And as you can see on the previous uh, illustration, that this way can also save uh, this space. And so to conclude this presentation. Uh, I would like to say a synchronization model of survey using hand carry server is for Raspberry Pi for larger scale and personal use was presented. 
incremental synchronization reduces the network transmission cost, which also reduces the disk space. Transmission cost is the network traffic and the time consumed for transmission. For the future work, so this work is only an experimental and real implementation is necessary to complete this research. Our, our this is only like a survey or a, just a lab experimental, but in the future, we would like to implement on the field. For example, we want to go to a developing country and we want to survey like 1,000 survey uh, 1,000 people, for example, using this method and how the surveyor's perception of him using this uh, using this uh, project, whether is it easier to use than the conventional method or not. And an extra future work, for example. Uh, Using this hand carry server base, we can do a further implementation. If not, my uh, my one was a survey, but this one is, uh, for example, in class. We can use this hand carry server as, for example, using a Twitter implementation where the hand carry server is here, and each person have a remote control to choose the answers and uh, statistic or analysis is generated instantly. And to remind you that this project was created because. In some countries, like in development countries, there is no internet connection. So that's why it's, we very recommend that you should we should bring the server to them. So that is all of my presentation. Thank you very much. And we, uh, I'll return the time to the moderator. Thank you. Thank you very much. あの、であれば、あの、英語でいただけると大変助かります。あの、私の方から、あの、please uh, uh, tell me that uh, what is the support target in this research. Okay, so the support target you mean the objective of this research? Yeah, okay. So the object so this is the this the title of this uh, of this uh, project is uh, incremental synchronization, and so the target of the objective of this research is to is one is to re, is to reduce the is to reduce the transmission costs to lower the transmission costs and to save this space. So on this one, we can see that we achieve our objective that the less this space is consumed compared to the previous one. Is a uh, this is the normal one where more this space is consumed, and we achieve our second objective, which is to reduce the transmission cost. The first, the uh, normally this is the this is the network traffic, but we we can reduce the network traffic by this much. So we so that is the second objective to reduce the transmission cost. Yes, you're right. The result or experiment uh, good value in, uh, in this experiment. Okay, so the result of this experiment is for me is a good value because it reduced from 50.4 to 24.9, 75.4 to 31.2, but it's not a perfect value because if you subtract this to this uh, it doesn't equal 75 you minus 75 minus 54 it doesn't equal to 31 50 to if, uh, minus 31 might not be this much so we are you because the the reason is because we are using a block based uh, differential synchronization so maybe the exact difference might not be generated so the limitation of this uh, research is uh, the exact difference might not be uh, it might not be able to be obtained, and in some cases uh, it might not work because if 
that if this one being is very lucky because on this case the new data is on the last side, but what happens if the data is shifted to other side? And in some cases we cannot detect detect the difference. But here is a good result. Uh, so in other words, this is a good result, but not a perfect result. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you for the presentation.